Hey guys, Killcam here. Welcome back to the channel. Gonna be playing some War Thunder today with an old favorite, the Focke Wolf 190D13. The D13 was the last of the 190's Long Nose Dora variants produced. The D series was supposed to be a stopgap while Kurt Tank's Ta 152 model was being ready, but it turned out to be one of the best fighter planes the Luftwaffe flew during World War II. In War Thunder, this is a premium aircraft with a battle rating of 6.0, so if you fly the German tech tree, having this plane in its 244% research points bonus is almost a requirement for the long grind through rank 4 and lower rank 5. So let's take a look at how this plane does in the arcade ground strike match I played. Right off the start, I have a formation of two bombers coming right at me. I've already got it in mind that those are two easy kills. So I put the plane into a climb for what I anticipate will be a head on on one bomber and a tail chase for the second one. But first, I spot another Dora in between me and them, so I decide to take out the threat so I clean the bombers. The Dora is distracted and below me, so it's not a major deviation from my plan or much risk to my plane. A dive and long burst from my cannons pretty much puts the enemy Focke-Wolf out of the game and frees me to attack the bombers. I pitch the D-13 up just in time to get a good deflection shot in the B-25 as it passes by. The Mitchell starts to smoke and trail flames, and I have my second kill. That leaves the Soviet Tu-2 alone and only about a kilometer away. That leaves nothing between me and a third kill but an unlucky shot from the Russian bomber's tail gunner, or really crappy marksmanship on my part. Despite a valiant effort at evasive maneuvers by the Tu-2 pilot, pretty much what I was expecting happens. The second bomber is put into the ground and I have three kills in a game that's barely two minutes old. Next engagement I spot a Spitfire down below that's in a vulnerable position and energy state. The Spitfire is going to go into a climb and regain altitude. I'm thinking that in the fog of war he just didn't notice I was there until it was too late. To be fair though, there was probably not a whole lot he could do except gamble on the last second turn forcing me to overshoot. It's just never good to be low and slow when you have a 190 above you. Kill number 4 is in the bag and I'm starting to remember just what a joy it is to play in the D13. I look around to see if I have any problems of my own and spot a Spitfire sneaking up from behind at 2 kilometers out. I turn my plane and use the rudder to get the nose around just in time to put guns on target. I think the Spitfire pilot was surprised that I got the plane turned around before he was in effective range so he tried to avoid a suicidal head on. His evasive technique wasn't very good though as he didn't barrel roll, instead he went into a shallow dive and gave me a pretty easy shot at him. Another Spitfire heading for the ground on fire and I've got 5 kills. Here I am looking at a Dornier 217 flying alone without an escort. To my mind, another easy kill. I just point my nose at it and hold down the web key. Not a whole lot to my plan, but to chase it down and shoot. Really, the only problem I can run into here is if some fighter were to pop up out of the clouds and catch me napping. So I keep an eye on the clouds below and another on the radar while the range ticks down. At this point in the chase, for some inexplicable reason, I extend my combat flaps. I don't know why I did that, but maybe I was smoking crack or something. In any case, I'm getting closer and the Dornier doesn't even make an attempt to get into the cloud cover. Strange really because the pilot had to know I was closing fast and about to tear his plane apart with cannons. Since the bomber is flying straight level and with zero deflection, I can afford to be laissez-faire about it. At 500 meters I open fire and the 217 is a flaming wreck for kill 6. This time I'm looking at a relatively close B-17. The Flying Fortress is unescorted and too tempting a target to pass up. The closest help is a hurricane, but it's too low and far away to do anything for the bomber. I point the plane at where the B-17 is headed and I just wait for it to fly into my crosshairs. This is exactly where you want to attack a B-17. In tail chases, the American 50 calibers seem to chew up fighters and you come away with colored damage indicators. Lord, it's too long on a B-17's ass, you might even get put into the ground. That wasn't the case here though, and the B-17 is kill number 7. So, how about that hurricane from before? I'm too late to stop it from downing a friendly B-17. I mean, I try to get over there in time. I'm hoping that Paolo's gonna hang in there. I'm, I'm on my way, Paolo. Just a second longer. Just avoid a... No! No! Paolo, no! You son of a bitch, you killed Paolo! Ah! Hawker Hurricane, down for kill number 8. I'm sorry, Paolo. We're getting into the end game here, and here's where I make a fatal mistake. I'm in a head-on with two enemies. 
it's a poison pill. No good options here as it's too late to run and evading one will just set up the other for a good shot at me. My best chance is to take one out in a head on and keep zooming past towards the friendlies on the other side. It's a long shot either one I pick, but I think I choose wrong. I think I should have taken out the 109 because the Messerschmitt 410 turns like the Titanic in comparison. I get the 410 for my ninth kill, but the 109 ends my flyout in the D13. My team lost the match, but as I said, we're here to talk about the D13. Nine kills before a 109 ended my fun. This plane is a research point in Silver Lion ATM. If you fly German rank 4 and you didn't buy this plane, then I don't know what you're doing. Without it, hitting rank 5 will feel like it takes forever. The grind is real, my friends. All that said, I hope you enjoyed this kill cam update. You know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe. These things make your host happy. Thank you, and goodbye.